Hey everyone, Mike Moo here. This is a follow-up video on how to disable AT&T Wi-Fi, what happens after you disable it, and how you can get it back online. So I'm going to share two different main ways to go ahead and do this. Uh, actually, maybe three. I'll do three different ways. First is completely non-technical. So you went in and you disabled AT&T Wi-Fi, and now you want to get back, you want to troubleshoot. Simplest way to do that is to actually just go ahead and log into AT&T. The way I do that, since I always forget what the actual website is, uh, in order to manage this completely, is I just go to att.com, and then I choose account, and then go to my account, right? That'll take you, actually, you'll pass through to uh, account management, and there's actually a separate website, and I'll have a link down below for this as well, basically to manage your internet. Make sure you have your password to go ahead and log in, and after you do, you sign in. There'll be some options on here. Keep in mind that since I'm recording this January 27th, 2022, if you were seeing this as at a later date, there's a chance that, uh, you know, the interface somehow changes. I've noticed last time I checked about this on the AT&T management portal, it changed. But basically what you're looking for is you're going to log in and you're either going to go to service or troubleshoot or get support. Okay. So you're looking for support. Anywhere on here that you can find support is what you want. So as you can see, I have a get support down here. And, uh, you know, I got my services. Or you can do manage my internet. So you can click on manage my internet. Now, I won't be able to actually show you enabling it on because right now it is enabled. Um, I've moved out of L.A. and I'm back in the San Francisco Bay Area. So don't I don't actually have direct connection with my uh, home network. So I'm managing this all remotely right now on AT&T. Okay, so uh, once you get into my internet, all right, and this is the shortcut right here. See this URL? That's actually the shortcut to get to it. Uh, you'll want to go to click on manage network, all right, or manage Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and do manage Wi-Fi. Let's see what's going on in there. What's going to happen is it's going to show you your Wi-Fi information. And what it'll note for you actually is, is that if you had turned it off, it'll notice that it's off. You will then have the option on the screen uh, when it's working properly to turn it back on. Okay, and that's just really simple. That's that's all you got to do. I notice right now in my case, it's just, it's just simply not opening. Okay, it's just doing a test to see if there's any issues. And that's actually not what I want. So I'm going to go back to the main account management internet, go to manage network. And then from here, it'll tell you, hey, uh, use their app, this free smart home managed app. That's kind of annoying. And I'm going to just go ahead and see and click on network and see what we get here. Okay. So now you see that I'm here on the network. I'm going to I'm gonna copy this link and I'm, I'm actually going to link this link down below. What you want to do is click on restart Wi-Fi network or turn on Wi-Fi network. It'll show right here what's going on. Okay. So I actually don't have the option to turn it on because it's on right now. And, and I had to do this because uh, there were some network issues and power issues down in LA and there's no one there to manage it. So I had to remotely go in here and go ahead and, and restart and reset uh, a lot of things. So I don't have the option to turn it on, but it would be right here on the screen right here. It'll be turn on Wi-Fi network or restart not Wi-Fi network. Now, when it does this, uh, it'll let you know what the settings are somewhere along on the website. And I really dislike the website now. It's kind of hard to find and manage things. But if you don't know what those are, usually it defaults back to whatever's on the sticker on your AT&T Wi-Fi box. All right. So that's one way to do it. All right. Second way to do it. Second way to do it is you just reset everything. Okay. On the actual AT&T box, what you do is behind a box and and this is my video but i'm going to search for a different video okay um at&t own router i'm just going to refer back to my own video and you will see and this this is true of the current model at at&t most places too on the back of the box this this is what the back of the box looks like okay so you, you got a bunch of these things on here you got ethernet you got ont you got broadband and you got the phone, and then you got um, power. Now, you'll notice right over here is a reset switch. Re sorry, reset button. What you're going to do is you're going to take a pen and just poke that in there and hold it in for 30 seconds. Three zero seconds. All right, just count to 30 really slow, or if you count really fast, you know, count to 90. This button right here, this, 
This is the reset button. Hold that down for 30 seconds. That will reboot and reset everything. It's, it's basically a hard reboot. Now, when you do that, everything will be back to the default, which is everything that comes from the factory or when the guy comes out to set it up, it'll be exactly the way it was before. So if you want to find out information about that, on the sticker itself, on the unit, will actually have your um, Wi-Fi internet stuff on there. I'm trying to see if I have a picture right here. Uh, of, of the unit, but it, it's going to be on there. It's usually a yellow sticker, so it could be a different color later, and I actually don't see it right now. But your Wi-Fi information, SSID, everything will be there. Okay. Now, the way I like to do it, and that's if I actually have physical connection to the network, meaning I have a network cable from my laptop, my computer to the unit, is actually just plug in my computer directly to one of the Ethernet ports. And all you got to do is basically... Now, if you look in the back of the unit, just plug one of your Ethernet ports from your computer to a port back here. Okay. So when there's a port back there, uh, one one through four, if you followed my tutorial, you've already used one. You know, you, you just use up another one. Plug it in there, access the, uh, access the AT&T unit, and there's a default IP address. And the default IP address I covered in a different video. And again, I'm sorry that this isn't uh, like a thorough step-by-step, uh, thorough -step, but, but you know, I, I didn't think I needed to do this video, but a lot of people were asking me and I told them I moved away so I couldn't really access any of this stuff directly to show you completely. So uh, basically here's what I'm doing is um, after you plug in, that's, let's say you didn't change the IP address. Let's say you started out completely fresh. And if you did, then uh, after you plug in your network cable, you just go on in there to, uh, let me find the IP address here. It should say right there. There we go. Okay, it should say on a sticker. It starts with 192.168. I believe it's 192.168.0.254. Uh, sorry, 1.254. 1, 1 See that? Now, for whatever reason, your the sticker says something differently. Just go to that sticker. Basically, you type that into your browser, as I'm seeing, as I'm showing here on, on, the, uh, on this video here. And you just go basically open up a browser and you type in 192.168.1.254. You open that up and then you follow the rest of this video. Okay, you, you, you go there, you open it up. Just look at this video here. You type that in, you go there. And uh, basically, you need to log in. Login information is actually going to be a combination of the stuff on a sticker in the back. Okay. So take a picture of the sticker in the back, actually. This way, it's a lot easier to refer to. So take a, take a picture of the sticker in the back, and then and um, it'll have the login information on there and the password to log in. And then once you're in, this is basically the screen you're going to see. Now... As you follow along, you will see, you know, the status of your internet. You can restart it. You can turn it on. You can enable it and everything from this main part here. Okay. As far as the status, which is very useful, but uh, I'm going to fast forward ahead into this video and show you. Okay. So, so you needed, a, you needed a device access code and that's on that sticker I told you. You're going to go to, you're going to click on, all right. I'm just borrowing this video footage, by the way, again. So you're going to click on the home network, then click on a Wi-Fi. Okay. Now over here, if you had turned it off before, like you followed my last video, this is where you go to set it up again. You just turn it on. You can, you can adjust the uh, network name, SSID, change the password as you want and adjust all those things. You, you just come here to turn it back on. Make sure after you do this, you click the save down here below, right here. Make sure you click the save, all right? And make sure it's, it, it kind of sticks. Now, well, after you save, sometimes uh, the unit actually needs to reboot or something. Or maybe after you save and then you find out 10 minutes later, you still can't find the Wi-Fi that you had enabled. Just restart the unit, all right? Just unplug it, okay? Make sure after you save, right? Uh, give it a couple minutes. If it doesn't come on, all right, there's a chance that um, 
something went wrong with the saving that you just gotta start over and do it again. But usually it, it should work. I mean, technically it, it should work. Now I go over the rest of what was available, uh, what options uh, you can choose on here and explain a little bit about that. But if you look on the right hand side of this control panel, you'll see it, it writes out in reasonable explanation what each of those things are. And I go, I suppose I get into a little bit more detail about these things uh, in this previous video about how to disable your Wi-Fi. So it's the same stuff. I'm just explaining it. The only difference is whether it's on, whether it's off, and uh, what settings you want to go ahead and set up for that. So those are the three different ways that you can turn your Wi-Fi on your AT&T equipment back on. And this is 2022. Keep in mind, uh, I am using a video from 2020. Not a whole lot has changed right? Uh, as far as um, what everyone tells me. And when I had last had access to at and uh, on, on the interface itself, this is pretty much the same as it looked like before. at and website is a cold, totally different beast as I try to show you. It's, it's a little weird to navigate. It's kind of annoying. They kind of want you to use the at and Smart Home Manager app. That might actually be easier, but I, I'm not going to install that app and I'm, I'm not going to use it. So um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you how to do that. It should be very self-explanatory once you get in, though. All right. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this is good enough as a stopgap measure for you guys to go ahead and re-enable your AT&T Wi-Fi after you've somehow disabled it or you had some other issues with it. Uh, keep in mind that you can also contact AT&T. You can contact them via chat. You can contact them via the phone. And actually, if you call them, I do believe if you're willing to go through the telephone uh, menu directory, there are uh, some digits you can type in and respond where they will troubleshoot your Wi-Fi for you and automatically, you know, set that back on or turn it back on. That's one of the uh, benefits, so to speak, in terms of AT&T retaining control of your network is that they can support you better and have, have remote access and connection to help you troubleshoot uh, issues you might be experiencing. All right, that's wrap. Hopefully this was really helpful to you in terms of turning on AT&T Wi-Fi. Now, if you want to turn it off, again, I have that other video. Please check that out. Now, if you found this video useful to you, please give it a like. And here are a few other ways to support me. One of them is to like it and subscribe to my videos. Another way, if you want to buy me a coffee, I have a link to PayPal over here. Just scan it with your phone or check out my links below and seeing how else you can support my channel. Again, thanks for your support this year.